You're listening to the Chapter a Day Audio Bible. I'm John Stonge, and today we're in 1 Samuel chapter 22. And this is what we read. So David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. Soon his brothers and all his other relatives joined him there. Then others began coming, men who were in trouble or in debt or who were just discontented until David was the captain of about 400 men. Later, David went to Mizpah in Moab, where he asked the king, Please allow my father and mother to live here with you until I know what God is going to do for me. So David's parents stayed in Moab with the king during the entire time David was living in his stronghold. One day, the prophet Gad told David, Leave the stronghold and return to the land of Judah. So David went to the forest of Hereth. The news of his arrival in Judah soon reached Saul. At the time, the king was sitting beneath the tamarisk tree on the hill at Gibeah, holding his spear and surrounded by his officers. Listen here, you men of Benjamin, Saul shouted to his officers when he heard the news. Has that son of Jesse promised every one of you fields and vineyards? Has he promised to make you all generals and captains in his army? Is that why you have conspired against me? For not one of you told me when my own son made a solemn pact with the son of Jesse. You're not even sorry for me. Think of it, my own son, encouraging him to kill me as he is trying to do this very day. Then Doeg the Edomite, who was standing there with Saul's men, spoke up. When I was at Nob, he said, I saw the son of Jesse talking to the priest Ahimelech, son of Ahitub. Ahimelech consulted the Lord for him. Then he gave him food and the sword of Goliath the Philistine. King Saul immediately sent for Ahimelech and all his family, who served as priests at Nob. When they arrived, Saul shouted at him, Listen to me, you son of Ahitub. What is it, my king? Ahimelech asked. Why have you and the son of Jesse conspired against me? Saul demanded. Why did you give him food and a sword? Why have you consulted God for him? Why have you encouraged him to kill me as he is trying to do this very day? But sir, Ahimelech replied, Is anyone among all your servants as faithful as David, your son-in-law? Why, he is the captain of your bodyguard and a highly honored member of your household. This was certainly not the first time I had consulted God for him. May the king not accuse me and my family in this matter, for I knew nothing at all of any plot against you. You will surely die, Ahimelech, along with your entire family, the king shouted. And he ordered his bodyguards, Kill these priests of the Lord, for they are allies and conspirators with David. They knew he was running away from me, but they didn't tell me. But Saul's men refused to kill the Lord's priests. Then the king said to Doeg, You do it. So Doeg the Edomite turned on them and killed them that day, 85 priests in all, still wearing their priestly garments. Then he went to Nob, the town of the priests, and killed the priests' families, men and women, children and babies, and all the cattle, donkeys, sheep, and goats. Only Abiathar, one of the sons of Ahimelech, escaped and fled to David. When he told David that Saul had killed the priests of the Lord, David exclaimed, I knew it. When I saw Doeg the Edomite there that day, I knew he was sure to tell Saul. Now I have caused the death of all your father's family. Stay here with me and don't be afraid. I will protect you with my own life, for the same person wants to kill us both. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for the privilege that it is to look at it today and to study its content and to meditate on what you have communicated to us here. And Lord, we see the bitter fruit that comes from jealousy. When we look at the actions of Saul, we see a man who is intent on his own glory, and he's intent on preserving his own power. And he clearly has a pattern of doing things his way instead of submitting his will to yours. Lord, as the scriptures develop later on in the scriptures, we see your son, Jesus Christ, 
who submits himself to your will and honors you even though he is one with you. Lord, we pray that that would be the intent of our heart as well, that we would live a life that submits to your lordship, that we would glorify your name, that we would put you first in all matters and in all areas of our lives, and that we wouldn't go about our life in this world in such a way that we elevate our will, our preferences, our jealousies, our covetousness above your holiness and above your will. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your presence with us today. And we commit this day to your care and thank you for it. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for listening to this episode of the Chapter a Day Audio Bible. Don't forget, we also have a sister podcast called the Informal Bible Study, where we study the scriptures in depth in a casual and applicational way. New episodes of the Informal Bible Study go live every Monday, so be sure to check it out and subscribe through your favorite podcast player. Thanks again for listening, and have a wonderful day.